Right, welcome to this painting tutorial for High Fleet Leviathan. Uh, Gaunts we're going to paint here, so one of the basic models uh, from the Leviathan box set for Hammer 40,000 10th edition. I've always loved this colour scheme, uh, but I've been put off by the time and effort it would have been required to paint the skin and the, the chitin and so on. I was already running Tyranids anyway, I still am running another Tyranid High Fleet as well. But with the new edition of 40k plus, the way contrast paints work, they're very, very suited to this color scheme. So in this video, I want to show you a very quick method for painting these. Uh, hopefully a very quick and effective method here. If I bring this model up, it's High Fleet Leviathan. This video should be quite short, just to show you how easy and straightforward this is. Um, I'm very, very happy with the outcome on this. Um, so I'm going to share that with you in this video. It's a fast painting method. There is two other tutorials already available for larger models. So there's the uh, the Tyranny Prime, that's live, and you can check that out for a medium-sized model. And there is a longer tutorial, it's longer because it's a much bigger model, and I, I do a full basing tutorial uh, in that video as well, and that's for the Screamer Killer. Mightily impressive model, it's a massive thing. Uh, but you can check out those two videos, other videos are live. For this one, it is longer, it'll take a bit longer to show you how to paint the model, and also do a full tutorial on the basing. Uh, as you can see, just they're very happy with how the basings turned out. It's the same basing technique I'm using for my Harlequins, also my Imperial Fists, and the Thousand Suns as well. Uh, but I've taken the time just to, to run through uh, a full breakdown on the basing in that video as well. So plenty of resources for you. The same process is exactly the same. So for this monster that you see here, for the Prime, and also for the smaller models, it's exactly the same process. I've called it the Enhanced Contrast painting method. It's not just contrast, there's some enhancements there as well. So uh, just follow along step by step and there's no reason why you can't achieve the same results that you're seeing on the screen here. So first of all materials that you'll need, uh, which is quite limited, which is good. You know, it's not going to cost you too much to get hold of these materials. So first of all we'll go through sprays. To finish the model off I'm going to use Munitorum varnish. It's like a satin matte varnish uh, from Games Workshop. It enriches the colours nicely, but it's not too glossy, but it's not like a dead flat matte, which is not very good on metallics. Uh, so uh, it's my favourite varnish at the moment, so that's from Games Workshop. Uh, and then for discount 40k, including these materials that you're going to see here, do use the link in the video description below for the outpost. It's discount 40k. If you're in the UK, you can get free posters if your order's big enough, and for much of the European Union as well, across the seas, then you can get discount uh, it's 40k and then you can get your uh, free postage with duties paid as well. Uh, the next one is uh, it's Leather Brown from Army Painter. Now that's for the base, so that's optional, you don't have to have that colour if you're going to do a different basing scheme. I'll cover a little bit of basing here just briefly in this video, but you can see the rim and the base colour has been sprayed with that. We don't have to go for that if you don't want to. Uh, and then this is one of the key colours here, Wraith Bone from Games Workshop. So it's not white, it's like a bony, a very light bony kind of colour, uh, but that is uh, the key base colour across here. So it looks almost, perhaps almost white on the screen there, uh, but it is a, a soft kind of bone colour. We're just going to apply contrast straight onto that, so it's a brilliant head start that you're getting. Um, you know, you're spraying your rim, base colour, and the whole model, sprayed up, and then just ready just to apply paints straight away, so you're saving yourself loads of time uh, if you go down that route. So, again, if you're going to do the basing, then um, I have stones from the beach that I picked up. Sand mixed with stones in two different pots. That's optional. And then for the, the finishing of it, there's flock here. It's so dead grass from Games Workshop. If, you, if, they don't, if they don't do it anymore, uh, I'm not sure if they continue this one. I've had this one for years. Uh, you would be able to find it on eBay or you can find an equivalent to it. But the Games Workshop branded one, there's a nice strength to it here. Some of the other ones you get quite transparent, not very strong, but this one's a brilliant, big fan of this one. Uh, and then Grass Tufts, I did get those off eBay. Just sort of dead grass desert uh, scheme with those mixed uh, sizes. I think it's eight millimeter is the, the length of the grain on those ones. Then I'll go through the standard paints that you need. So to paint the model in the colour skin that you've seen, it's these paints across here. So Flesh Terror's Red, Contrast, Black Templar, Contrast, these are all contrast except this one. Uh, iron and Yellow, if you want to save a little bit then just regular yellow paint which you can water down will do fine, it's only really for the eyes. 
uh, but I've got a hold of this one anyway, uh, and on yellow contrast. Uh, Velopus pink, that's a key colour. If you want to match this skin, you do need, do need that one. Uh, Gilliman flesh, quite a crucial one as well. Uh, another contrast paint. And then shinish purple. There's a number of purples you can go for. There is a Leviathan purple contrast. I found it a bit too, for my liking, too bright, too cartoony. Uh, it's still a dark enough purple. If you want a bit more of a pop and to stand out a little bit more, and you want to go with Leviathan, you know, the official colour, then by all means go with that. Uh, shinish purple's darker. Uh, purple, more subdued, uh, but yeah, that, that's the colour, that's how it turns out on the model. I'm just looking at the model on the camera, it's a pretty good match, so over the colours there. So if you like that, uh, it's more of the, the updated colour scheme from Games Workshop, uh, as opposed to if you go back through models painted down the years, perhaps they're a bit more of a brighter purple. So it's, it's your choice, your taste, whatever you want to go for. If you want something a bit brighter, go for Leviathan purple. The process would be the same, the effect would be the same. Uh, but I've gone for Shaish uh, purple. And then uh, technical contrast medium, so for thinning down. Uh, the Volupus Pink, and then add Wraith Bone here, so you've got the spray, you've got the paint, the two match up, so you can do repair work, highlighting and so on, uh, with Wraith Bone base uh, paint from Games Workshop. Then for the basing work, this is optional, uh, if you like the colour scheme here, then by all means copy it. Uh, the colours you'll need will be uh, Mornfang Brown and Baden Black, now that's if there's areas where the spray is missed and need to fill it in with watery colour, then I mix a bit of more fang brown and bad and black together and just do a watery wash across the sandy parts that haven't been caught by the spray. Uh, I highlight it with a shabby bone and ceramite white, which we'll, I'll, I'll do a bit in this video just to show you the basing. Uh, and then a bit of shading can be done with some seraphim sepia uh, shade wash. So those are optional. If you're not going to uh, copy the colour scheme, then you don't need those. Just stick to the contrast paints uh, and the wraith bone uh, listed already so that's the materials that you'll need all right a couple of extra bits here there's a color mist i've left it to the side it's magos purple it's semi-optional this one i use that for all the tongues so it's only a small part uh, of the model so that's the prime that's how the magos purple turns out on the tongue it's just a different tone that you can go for if you want to i mean you could get away with velopus pink or, or flash terrors red even you could do that but uh, so that's optional, you can add that in. I, I'll stick to Magos Purple. So that's another contrast uh, to use for the scheme. And then for models like this with the, the blue brains across here, that's two shades. Uh, the Achelian Green contrast paint across the model. Uh, and then the, the darker recess is just to enhance the shading. I just run uh, in the... Uh, Recesses there, Griff Charger Grey contrast paint. And then to highlight that, just to bring up the edges and so on, I'd, I just take some Ceramite White and mix it actually with a bit of the Achelian Green and you get like a white, a, a watery white off tone and then you just, just run it over highlighted areas, catch the edges with it and it seems to bring it up just nice. But that's the effect that you can get with that. So. That one there so it seems to work just fine and if you want to copy that then that's the colors you can use so as i said for, for basing i'm going to do a, a sort of a basic one here we'll cover a little bit of bit of it but if you want a full basing tutorial on how to do all the accessories and so on like this sticking the rocks on building the whole thing up materials uh, and all of that then uh, and painting the concrete and the girders and all these different things then check out this tutorial for the screamer killer and I'll give you the full details for the basing and if you want to copy that, you're welcome to do so. So preparation then, as the basing is done with PVA glue, and then as shown earlier on, the sand and the stones. So paint the whole base of the PVA glue, build the model, paint the base of the PVA glue. Uh, some of these type of stones across here, scatter those on, and then dip the model in here and flick across the sand and the stones, uh, and then let that dry entirely. And then when, when it's drying, the basic materials run my thumb around the model like so just to catch any loose stones and just to tidy it up. Once that's completely dry, as uh, I spray the model with the Wraith Bone. Seems to be that two thin coats work, works best as a one heavy spray, so just a lighter spray uh, catching underneath the model, especially the monsters and so on. Uh, and then let that dry and then come again and do a second coat and seems to give a nice coverage. Uh, the Games Workshop sprays are brilliant. Uh, but like any spray, heavy coats are not very good at all. 
uh, so lighter, lighter spraying is better. Uh, then once that's completely dry, I would use like a, a tissue and then wrap around the model uh, and then spray with my Leather Brown Army Painter spray and that will catch most of the sand, not all of it, uh, most of the sand and then most importantly a nice even coat on the rim of the model uh, and that finishes that rim before it's all painted. The idea is not going to touch that, it's actually the finished colour. Again, going to save your time painting all the rims. It's nice and durable when you can use spray as opposed to paint, which comes off uh, more easily. So once that's done, uh, you're pretty much ready for starting. So I have some Shabti Bone here. We'll do the base, which won't take very long. I'm going to scrub out and go for a, a, a dry brush here with this. So I can bring this up to to show you what a shabti bone is like. So I'm s an old brush, just scrubbing it along, not too heavy because I want to fill in, I just want to highlight the sand. And you can see that going on, that's going on really well. And just work my way in, just cover all those, or highlight all those stones. And you get something looking like that. I then take some ceramite white and mix it a little bit with some shabti bone. You've got like an off off white kind of colour, but it's a, certainly a lighter form. And then I'm not going to scrub as hard on this. I'm just going to catch the top edge top edges of the stones for this one. Now this has gone on. I usually get some on the rim by mistake. I haven't done it this time, but if you do, you can just wet your finger and then quickly remove it. Keep that base trim nice and clean. And that's the highlighting done. Very, very quick. You batch paint these. The idea is we get through these nice and quick. So that's the base highlighting done. So the idea is that with the spray is it's spraying the rim for you. Uh, it's providing you the darker tone already in place. You can just go straight to highlights with that. Uh, then for uh, the, the rest of the model, there's some areas where the brown spray has gone onto the model itself. So I'm going to turn to my uh, Wraith Bone paint. And I'm just simply going to repair uh, where that's gone. So maybe you can see this hoof here at the back uh, and part of his leg got sprayed over. So I'm just going to paint that with the colour. Repairs are easily done. And looking something. Like that, there's nowhere else really where the brown paint's gone. So you get a bit of overspray, but that's easily repairable. That's that done, just let that dry completely. Alright, next color, whilst we're on the base, uh, take a rough brush, some serif from sepia, and then work that into uh, the base. So in little patches, usually around the feet, just to anchor the model in. And uh, you can see it there, anchor it around the feet just to anchor the model into the base and it just provides another shade of brown and again I'm taking my time but you can fly through this really quick you've just got a nice secondary tone going on with the seraphim sepia let that dry and that really is the base if you're not going to do extra accessories and bits that's the base in finish just put flock on later on that's finished so very very quick Indeed, again, thanks to the spray. Don't worry about rims, it's completely finished. The shading's all done with the spray, and just a few highlights, a bit of wash, and your basing is complete for that. Uh, so now we can just focus on the model. All right, so the first stage is your Velopus Pink. This is this is key here because this is going to shade the entire model. Uh, the only time you're not going to use it again is on these uh, brainy parts. If you have a model with that, then just avoid that, leave that uh, the plain Wraith bone. But in every other situation, I paint Velopus Pink wash. And over the whole model. So it's strong, it is a strong contrast paint. So we're gonna water that down, we use technical contrast medium. You could use water, I guess, as uh, no guarantees as to how that come out. It seems to come out okay, uh, but I'm gonna stick with the formula that Games Workshop have come up with. So, uh, you know, and these, these products match each other. You can get contrast mediums from other companies and so on, but I'm just gonna stick with the, uh, the brand here because these two, you know, they've been tried and tested by the interact with each other. So I'm gonna to stick to that. Uh, so Velopus Pink and Contrast Medium. Uh, you need a couple of brushes for this one. So three rough uh, brushes. One to apply 
and then two to siphon off onto a mixing uh, palette. I've just got a white sheet here that I'm going to use just to show you uh, the tone that you need. So I'm going to take one brush. I'm going to take half a brush for because I'm only going to paint this one model. But if you're batch painting, you can mix up a lot more. And I'm just going to put that there. And then I'm going to take, which is a higher amount than Games Workshop uh, initially recommend. But I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five, six. Now usually I do seven, but I suspect that's going to be enough. Then I'm going to take my actual application brush and bring the wash in. And that's, that's thinning down quite nice. It's more of a ghostly kind of pink coming through. I'm going to take one more amount. I'll do my seven. I've said that in previous tutorials that one in one part in seven seems to mix up well enough. So you're going to get like a softer, gentler pink and it seems to look better. Harsh flesh on Leviathan doesn't look as good. The softer tones are better. Look how soft that is. It's really nice and that's one part in seven. So if you like that kind of tone, I'd recommend going for that. It still shades deep and dark enough in uh, the darker recesses, like in here and in here as well. But it gives you that softer tone and I'm really happy with how that's come out. That's one in seven, which is what we've mixed up just here. So I had a generous amount, not too heavy, not too thin though. And I'm just gonna apply this across the whole model. So there's not really any great technical skill required. The main, the main point is to work this into all the nooks and crannies. Any areas that you miss, uh, you're gonna have to fill in later on and remix this stuff and so on. So it's, it's handy just to use a good size brush, work this in. Especially these little holes, these holes here on the tower, they can be tricky. Make sure you work it into those. There's a few times where I've not gone inside and it's been got in there and it's stayed the bone colour. So working around the gun. And then just going around the rest of the model. Using the same brush to collect any extra that's not needed and then moving it onto another area. And this one's got quite long bristles, so it's good for pushing in at deeper into the model in between these tricky legs and so on. And just lift it up, you'll get through a fair bit. But a pot of the contrast and the Vlopus pink and a pot of the medium, I would say should stretch you a good way. I've painted up a good number of monsters and models here. And I've got loads left in, in the pots, so. I think you get a thousand points worth of models done just with one pot, I would imagine. All right, covered that pretty good. I think that's gone on okay. So that's what you're looking at. It's gonna be so, so helpful as you're gonna see when you come to the other shades and so on. It just marks out the model nicely for it. it just brings out all those details and it gives you that really subtle sort of pink flesh kind of color. And that's what, that's what put me off doing High Fleet of Five and having to paint all of that and do the regular sort of highlight method, but this, is very very fast and just as effective if not superior because it's so soft with the shading so very happy how this has turned out let it dry completely before moving on to the next stage all right so that's dried completely the next bit is velopus pink as it comes from the pot so in its stronger form and it's these ribbed bits here if i start painting i'll show you so these ribbed sort of parts on the skin it almost splits open i'm just gonna use my finger to correct that mistake but you should see that just being filled out quite nicely. You usually find them on the arms. Not in this case, but the larger monsters, if there is actually. The larger monsters, you'll see them. Arms on the inside and outside. And on the fires. Sometimes the lower parts, the legs, just they'll be occurring more on monsters. And there's another one here. On the other side. So you can correct mistakes quickly with a finger if you can reach them, or uh, you can quickly, and you'll need to move fast because contrast seems to dry quick enough, uh, water down a brush and then just 
uh, wash it out of there, but that's uh, those picked out. So that's nice and quick. Like so, it doesn't take very long at all. Next color is Gilliman Flesh. So we're gonna use that on, I'm gonna go for uh, a brush with a good tip, a bit bigger size. So any joints and sinews uh, between limbs, so like the back of the heel here, and the at the ankle, just in there, uh, this little bit that holds the spike at the back of his leg. And I'm just painting it as it comes from the pot, a single coat, and again, the great thing about contrast is that I'll put a coat of this on and then that's that finished. I won't come back to that, there's no further work to be done. So, you know, this is really saving you some time, but you're still getting some really good results. Uh, then I'm gonna paint the, the gun and the pipes. So, like these pipes and bits here. Painting around the gun. Being careful not to do any of the fingers on the arms. I'll leave that the shaded pink. Uh, and then all of this around here, just the chamber of the gun. There's some fingers sort of poking through, so I'll leave those around the barrel of the gun. I'll shade that all there. So you're creating a different tone on a different part of the model. I'm leaving the chitin armor. That's, we'll come back to that with a different contrast. I'm going to work around the rest of the model here. That's the raw bones and sinews, uh, joining parts, uh, and then the, in this case, the gun uh, here on this gaunt. So, look at something like that. The next colour, ironed in yellow, or watered down yellow paint. Just going to pick out the eyes. One, two. And there's like an eyeball thing on the gun just here. So, I'm going to fill it in with that colour as well. Nice and straightforward, it's not very much at all. Uh, so that's that done. Right, so just to point out, I'd, I've gone around the joints and sinews, like I've said, uh, and then the gun, you can see it shaded up like so. Uh, also the mouth and the teeth, but not the tongue. That's completely dry, them taking Magos Purple. Again, this is a uh, very easy bit to do. I'd flood on the Magos Purple. A nice generous amount. Just flood the colour on and just run it all the way into the mouth. I really let that build up as thick as I can get it. You can go for a second coat if you want, but I'm happy enough with that. So it's Magos Purple finished. The next color is Black Templar. All the claws, hooves, and any chitin that's on like guns and weapons. So the flesh borer here, for example. We'll come to that in a second. Now, again with this one, I'm using a nice neat brush. I'm gonna paint on not too thick, not too thin. Just a generous amount onto this claw and it will self shade self highlight itself just the way contrast works so i'll not need to come back to this i won't need to add any kind of gray highlights at all this is the idea of contrast is the speed of it so i'm just picking these out just the once and i won't have to come back to them in the old process you paint the black get to highlight do a second highlight uh, and so on and so forth but now with contrast pretty much get just as effective a result but just with the one coat and the great thing about contrast is that it's watery enough so you've got brilliant sharpness and control of it as well I'll go around the hoof so I'm gonna pick out the hoof but not the little claw bits that are at the top of the, the hoof there I'll leave those back of the hoof under the hoof here that's raised up and you get a result just like that when that dries there'll be a slight highlight left with that I can see, can easily see where I'm going because the Velopus pink's gone over the whole model. It's shaded all the shady areas for me. So it acts as a guide knowing exactly where to paint up to. So it works out really well indeed. So that's that. And then for the, the chitin armoured plating on any weapons, according to the, the other colour schemes that I've seen and what Games Workshop do is they, they pick that out in a different tone. So like so, I'd go over all of that here uh, on this flesh borer. I'm going around neat just with the 3D lifted nature of the chit in here. I'll just work my way all the way around carefully. And I can flood it on a little bit just to 
shade it up nicely. So I'll just work across the whole model. You'll see little spikes like at the back of the the ankles here as well as a couple. And you'll see it on the other monsters as well. So I just pick those out nice and straightforward. It's not taking very long at all. So your model should be looking something like that. There's a few little extra bits that I missed that are going to be flesh, just again sticking to that roll of the joints and sinews. As, and then I've gone around the ankles uh, here with the Black Templar and the Chisholm Across is a few little bits picked up. So hopefully you can see that there on the model. So next is Shyish Purple. We're making really good progress with this project here. And hopefully showing you how quick this is. So I've got a, a slightly larger brush, but it's a nice tip to it and good shape. And we're going to pick out the, the classic Leviathan. Uh, color scheme here is this purple chitinous color shyish purple the trick of this one if you check out the older tutorial which is you can do chitin by doing feathering it's called where you work the brush across and build up your highlights that does take a while uh, it's quite tedious but it's effective enough uh, but i'm going to do contrast method here now one coat i'll start applying this so i'm just going to work this onto the model again the same kind of coat here so a generous amount not too thin not too thick i've got to go carefully around my edges just to catch because this is raised sort of armor here so I want to catch the raised edges here neatly again the Velopus pink wash is guiding me exactly where to go and then just use the brush to fill it in now what you'll get is like a thinned coat starting to dry you can see it that's to our advantage we want to leave it like that so you get a, a thinned out purple kind of finish that'll act as the final highlight and then we'll do a second coat in all the recesses just to build up the strength of this tone but keep the highlights in fact we're not be painting on any highlights at all we're just going to be shading and then the highlights is the what's left behind so it's fast and effective doing it this way it seems to work out really well I'm just going to go around the whole model, but look look at that, within seconds we've got ourselves the Leviathan colour skin coming up really nice. So that dries, then what happens is I'll do a second coat uh, in all the recesses, but leaving the edges just with the one coat, and that leaves you your highlight left behind. Uh, Contrast can go quite muddy kind of looking, so it does work, but it has that kind of muddy kind of look. Uh, so to define it better, just a second coat of the same contrast, filling in the recesses, and it'll give you a highlight and it'll shade and give you that nice strength. And I've done no highlights on that at all. No brushwork, no mixing up lighter colours, no multiple layers. Purely contrast and you're getting your uh, effect just there. And it's the same across the whole model. You can see it there on the back. There is that lighter tone coming through. That's because I haven't coated it a second. I've left it at that first coat. So that's the trick with this one. And it means you can just batch paint with these fast because highlighting chitin on loads of models is gonna is really gonna slow you down uh, but with this method you can move through quite quickly and I've been able to paint up uh, really half an army in record time using this method so I'm just gonna keep going or we'll coat the whole model all the chitinous areas uh, with this contrast paint all right so looking like that second coat same brush so I'm only gonna go into the the recesses this time so i'm going to go into this armor plating but i'm going to leave the edge and i think you can see it yeah and then i'm going to work it into here but leave the edge work it into here pushing it into the shaded areas but again leaving the edge leaving the edge there and you can start to see the effect coming through nice deep purple with shyish purple but a second coat will just block that out nicely. And I'm just going to work my way down the back. And just go over the whole model. But that's uh, shading and highlighting all done in one. So happy enough how that's coming up. Alright, so looking at something like that. Shaded up really well. Highlighting done. So the final step, enhanced contrast. When you paint contrast on, uh, it does do the shading for you. But it also kills the... the the highest possible tone it always shades it a little bit to some degree plus a little bit puddly and blotchy in, in places so to enhance this just simply go back to the wraith bone paint add, and then you're tidying the model up and highlighting at the same time this will go on nicely onto the flesh this tail I just want to pick it out just to pure wraith bone just run the brush along this direction 
and then just pick out those little dots and that's it i'm not painstakingly having to go around the whole thing because the shade's so gentle on it i can just pick out the most extreme raised sort of areas so for example take this leg if i was batch painting these pick out the ankle top of the leg bottom of the knees got two knees this thing and then the top there that's it it just lifts it a little bit here at the back that's it and then just move on top of the shoulder muscle muscle forearm down here knuckles just drag the brush across down here here top of the other arm and i'm just picking that out and just lifting it tidies the whole thing up sharpens it lifts it just makes it pop a bit more uh, the side of the head repaint carefully catch those circles and the top just under the eye the jawline just made a mistake there and touched the top of that gun i'd rather just rub that off that's it catch that jawline strengthen that and then later on uh, i'll do this now just to show you but taking a finer brush and I'm going to pick out those teeth. So it's literally just a case of dragging the brush over the top. Always want the teeth to stand out on Tyranids. And actually run the brush across those. And again, that just picks those out. So you've got that kind of detail there on the face. With not much effort at all. That's the brilliant thing about this. So that model, as you're looking at it, is actually finished. Got the other side to do. Uh, I'll be picking out the teeth, picking out the detail, but quite simply doing it. Uh, just not, not painstakingly having to go around all the details because the, the contrast paint has done such a good job. So I'll just go around the rest of this model and then you've got yourself a finished uh, gaunt here. It doesn't take too long at all. All right, so the final stage of this model is to finish off with the basing. So old brush, a blob of PVA glue. We're going to plant a tuft. This is a small model, so a small base. So I'm going to take a smaller tuft here. I need to do this on a couple models, usually tough to save for the larger models. Uh, I'm going to plant this. I dip it in the PVA glue to root it. It comes already sticky, but I like to just plant them with glue. And I'm going to drop this in right in here. Push it down a little bit. Take the rough brush uh, and then just help bed it in. And run this through. A little bit along the front here. That's fine. Then go to my pot. Sprinkle this on. Just make sure the model's dry, otherwise you can get this flock in the wet paint and it'll be hard to get out again, if not impossible. And just tapping that. Applying it. Give it a good tap. Bash off the excess. <laughs> Just off camera, just blowing the excess away here. Running my finger around the edge to remove any excess flock. And then that's it. And I think that's a really nice way of finishing off. The, I love the the, uh, the match between the flock here uh, and this colour scheme for High Fleet Leviathan. And that's the model completely done. So there he is. So model done. There's the other one that we had at the start. Uh, the final finish to those is your uh, Mutatron varnish, just to give that a spray. I'll just tie the whole thing in nicely for you, add a bit of protection to the model. Uh, and that's even completely finished. I paint these in batches of 10, batches of 20. Uh, couldn't see it being much of a problem. A good few hours and you'd work your way through a batch. That's nice and straightforward. So this is, a, I think it's an effective painting technique. Contrast is absolutely fantastic, especially for these. For some factions it suits really well, but for this faction, this color scheme, contrast is amazing so by all means copy what i've done here do check out the other tutorials got the prime uh, model the medium size one and they've got the big monster uh, the screamer killer as well all using the same process same technique check out the um this one here for the screamer killer because it's the full basing tutorial on there as well and you're welcome to copy this uh, basing color scheme i think the desert style and the brown uh it just matches up really nice uh, with the color scheme for high fleet leviathan so uh, you're welcome to copy that in the link in the video description should be a list of all the colors and paints and accessories that you need uh, so you we've got that reference for you as well uh, to get a hold of tyranny models 
sprays, paints, and so on, then do use that link in the video description below uh, for the outpost. It doesn't cost you anything to do it, but we get a little bit of kickback from that. It does help support the channel. That helps us get more models and more armies uh, up and running uh, here on the channel. But keep a look out for more painting tutorials, more content for 10th edition. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time.